Something a bit different today, folks. We're in Newborough, Cambridgeshire, a small village just north of Peterborough, where nothing ever happens. There's a neat village sign, a phone box full of books, and on a Sunday, people mow their lawns. But Newborough has a hidden history, one which most of the residents don't even know about. People walk and drive and cycle past the remnants of this every single day. Come ride with me and I'll explain all about it. We head north on the main road through the village, past the Bull Inn, and then over the main road onto Willow Drove. The sign here says dead end, but it isn't. You can get all the way through to the northeast to Crowland on this road. Let's go. After about a mile, we climb and turn right onto Coronation Bank. On our left, about 300 metres away, is the River Welland. But between the river and where we're riding is an area of low ground known as the Crowland High Wash. There are no houses here. This land is earmarked to be deliberately flooded to save the houses and farms beyond it in the event of heavy rain. But I didn't bring you here to talk about drainage. Let's pull up on this handy concrete hard standing and I'll explain more. Let's walk down this bank and see what we can see. This is a concrete pillbox designed for light infantry using rifles and Bren guns. And it's not unique, it's just one of hundreds of similar structures which were woven together into a complex network known as the GHQ line. This pillbox is part of the Homeland Defences built in 1940 it enjoys an excellent view and a field of fire from where it's located to that bank you can see in the distance, which is the River Welland. Four miles west of here is the town of Market Deeping. And this pillbox forms a link in a chain which goes from Market Deeping all the way to Cambridge, then south to London, and then west to Bristol. Now once you know what these pillboxes are for, and once you know that they're linked, and there's some sort of plan behind where they're located, you'll start to see them everywhere. Let's go and look at a few more. And let me explain a little bit about the bike I'm on while we get to the next pillbox. I'm riding a 1941 matchless G3L WD, and they were used by dispatch riders during the war. It's good for about 50 miles an hour these days and has 13 brake horsepower. It's really nippy and manoeuvrable, and great for rough roads like this. And now, especially for those of you who think that motorbikes are the devil's work, here's a bit of history instead. In the last week of May 1940, Britain evacuated over 300,000 troops from the beaches at Dunkirk. But although the men were got off successfully, all of the heavy material and armour was left behind. This gave General Ironsides, Commander-in-Chief Home Forces, a wicked problem to solve. With invasion barges filling up in the continental ports and German airborne troops and paratroopers stepping up their training, how do you defend an area as vast as southern England without a mobile heavy force that can move quickly to the point of battle? 
Well, the short answer is you can't, you're screwed. So what Ironside decided to do was to establish a stop line where the enemy forces on the likely axis of advance could be brought to a halt while reinforcements could be brought up to engage them. And this is the GHQ line. Here's another pillbox. This one's at Crow Tree Farm. And now we turn left onto North, across the bridge at Speechley's Drove. This bridge isn't everything, it seems. We'll come back to this in a minute. Now at Panks Farm, a pillbox so well hidden that I sailed straight past it. Did you see it? And this is when I noticed that a minor squeak from the rear drum brake is turning into something a bit more serious. And as we examine this pillbox, we see another one further away in a more exposed position in the middle of Nubra Fen. Back down the road at the bridge that leads into Speechley's Drove, this large concrete block just to the left of the bridge is a tank obstacle. This would have been lifted up and placed in the road to bar the way. It is absolutely enormous. If we look closely at the bridge itself, this isn't everything it appears either because on the far side of the arch, on the south side, you'll see a small hole. These are repeated on the other side of the bridge too. These holes are for demolition charges, so the bridges can be blown and denied to the enemy. And as we head east away from Speechley Drove, the squeak in the rear drum brake reminds me that it's probably time to curtail this ride and look for another form of transport. As I cross the A16, dodging the modern traffic, it occurs to me that my next video is almost certainly going to be how you replace the linings in rear drum brakes on a matchless. take a right and then a left turn and head away on the Bukorn Road which goes towards the small village of Thorny. Now Thorny is where Hugh Cave the Builders were located during World War II and overseen by Royal Engineers they built all of the pillboxes and defences in this local area. And because the ground around here is basically peat and liable to subsidence if you put anything heavy on it then each of the pillboxes had to be built on top of a concrete raft to stop it sinking too far. And as a result, each one weighs about 100 tonnes. And the reason why there are so many still here, even in this day and age, is because they're more expensive to demolish than they were to build in the first place. This is the last pillbox we'll stop at, at the colourfully named Powder Blue Farm. And I just wanted to make the point that although these pillboxes were all based on standard designs, there were lots of different types and this particular one is associated with an anti-tank ditch and was scaled for heavier weapons. Now I've got one more thing to show you and I think you'll find this quite interesting but I'm going to head home so I don't aggravate the brakes on the matchless and get a faster bike. As I jump on the Triumph I just have to remind myself that the brakes are on the opposite side as are the gears and the gears are also the other way up because we're not at home to Mr. Cocker. I'm so sorry, the picture appears to have gone a bit blurry there. Midway between the villages of Eye and Thorny, 
we turn right onto south and go between quarries. And after about a mile on the left hand side of the road, hidden by the trees, is a large farm complex and a building called Willow Hall. And Willow Hall was identified by the German Airborne Division from reconnaissance photographs and nominated to be their headquarters after the invasion. This fact only became known to the occupants of Willow Hall in 1944 when following the invasion of Normandy plans were discovered in a bunker in Cherbourg that revealed all. And in a similar vein we now know that Hermann Göring intended to take over Burley House. Cheeky bastard. Looking back now more than 80 years later we can be grateful that the Battle of Nubrafen never happened. If it had, it would have been hard fought and bitter. So we can be grateful that those pillboxes and defences that we pass every day as we drive along the Fen roads were never called into action. My name is Terry. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think.